it's been quite a while since I put up uh, a video. I've been away for quite a while and uh, this is due to work. You know, I have a full-time job, so this is something I do on the side. So I'm learning on the job. Basically, that's what it is. You know, you learn new things, you apply new things. Most uh, times you don't even know what type of videos to put up. So it is very difficult trying to juggle a full-time job shooting videos editing and uploading on youtube uh today i want us to discuss something basic and this goes to people living in the diaspora and as well those back home can relate i'm not saying they can relate in terms of what we experience but i'm saying they can relate so this informs a lot of people what diasporans go through. Let's just talk about bills, bills in general, okay? And this goes to all diasporans, those living in Canada, Germany, those living in Amsterdam, uh, those living in the United States, um, Australia, you name it, okay? All the European countries, you name it. The UK, you name it. Now, you work hard for your money, but also, the more you receive, the more you are expected to give. So we spend a lot of what we receive. A lot of people don't really get the concept, but uh, the reality is the more you receive, the more you spend. Okay. And today I'm going to list a few of the, of the bills that uh, diasporans pay. Okay. On top of the list, you have your mortgage for those who have bought houses or those who, you know, own a house. On top of the list, you have your mortgage. Or if you're renting an apartment, you have your rent, which takes a chunk of your income. Then you have your electricity bill. You have your water bill. Um, uh, you have your internet bill. You have your phone bill, uh, you have your credit card bills, and then let's go down to car loans, okay? If you've loaned a car, definitely you're going to be paying a car loan. And then you have your car maintenance bills. I mean, that doesn't really come on a monthly basis. So you may be looking at uh, quarterly, now let's look at if you are the type of person who goes to church you're going to be paying tight on a monthly basis um, you have your car insurance um, you also have medical bills you have you have your student loan and not to forget if you have kids definitely you have your daycare bills all these are paid on a monthly basis so put this into perspective if you're getting paid bi-weekly or on a monthly basis you would have to really really squeeze yourself to be able to meet all these bills it is not so easy you would definitely realize that after paying all these bills you probably have 100 to 200 dollars left okay and i've not talked about food i've not talked about clothing after paying or after taking care of all these bills your mortgage your light bill your water bill uh, your internet your phone bill your credit card your car loan your car insurance um uh, what your car maintenance tight uh, association dues medical medical bills student loans and daycare bills after paying all these bills you will realize that you probably have only a hundred to two hundred dollars left and we have not even talked about food and clothing okay so how are we able to 
uh, remit money back home? How are we able to send money to friends, families, and loved ones back home? Most people depend on working over time. Okay. Most people depend on overtime money. I'm talking about you working 12 hours to 16 good hours a day. 12 hours to 16 hours a day. And I won't lie to you. Some people go to the extreme of doing 18 hours a day. Okay. You work 16, 12 to 16 hours for five to six days straight in a week. And you probably have only one day to rest and then you go back to work. Okay. Uh, because of this, a lot of people put their phones on silence. A lot of people don't want to receive calls from family, friends, and loved ones back home. Uh, all they care about is going to work, doing that over time, trying to take care of bills, trying to take care of the family, you know, trying to make a living uh, whilst living abroad. Okay. And a lot of people don't understand that. But this is the reality. Uh, we work extra hard. We work extremely hard to fund our lifestyle whilst living abroad. Hear it from me. We work extremely hard, extremely, you know, we sweat a lot to fund our lifestyle whilst living abroad. So if you want to drive that uh, SUV, you want to drive that Mercedes Benz, you want to drive that uh, Range Rover, you want to drive that expensive car, you know, you work a lot to fund your lifestyle. Basically, that's what it is. Okay. If you want your personal space, you work a lot for it. Okay. If you want your freedom, you work a lot for it. Be aware that it is not that people living in the diaspora do not want to help. Uh, as a matter of fact, I can boldly tell you that about 70 to 80 to 90 percent of diasporans are willing to help you know they are willing to to assist people living back home but there is an underlying issue that they also have to deal with before they can you know help those back home it's not so easy to send money to friends loved ones and family back home so the very little that people send you, please and please appreciate it. You know, some people, you send them money and then you have to call them and ask them, hey, did you receive the money? Um, you know, because the money is so little, they will not, you know, call you back and tell you that they've received the money. You have to call them and ask them, hey, did you receive the money? You know, we are asking you this because we want to rule out uh the money that we've sent you as an expense okay we want to take them out of our bills and you know check to see how much we have left what we are able to do with you know whatever you have left in your bank account you know if you have to take care of any external bills then you go ahead and take care of those okay um it is not so easy but again this is the life that we have chosen and I don't see a lot of people trying to move back home anytime soon, especially with the economic meltdown going on in Ghana. Let me just focus on Ghana. I was born and bred in Ghana, so let me just focus on Ghana. I don't know about any other country in Africa. Let me just focus on Ghana. The economic meltdown, the economic hardship that people are going through, it's unprecedented. It's, it's just... It's just unbearable, okay? But again, people are surviving, you know, people are doing what they have to do to survive. So be very appreciative of any friend, any family member who sent you something little, okay? It's, it's not so easy out here, okay? For me to send you $100, uh, let's talk in terms of Ghana cities. I, I'm not going to quote in dollars. For me to send you 500 Ghana cities, 
a thousand Ghana cities, thousand five Ghana cities, two thousand Ghana cities. No, in all this, I forgot to uh, talk about your gas. You know, I didn't even put that in. I forgot to talk about your gas bill. So for people to send you five hundred, uh, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred, a thousand, thousand five, two thousand Ghana cities, it's not so easy. Okay. So let's be appreciative of what people do for us and uh, do not think that they have it in abundance and they don't want to give, okay? They also have other plans. You know, whilst we are here, we are thinking about, you know, investing back home. We are thinking about building back home. And the same people who you help, if you don't do anything back home, they'll be the same people to say, oh, he went to abroad for 20, 30 years and he came back with nothing. They forgotten that you were working extra hard, taking care of family, taking care of friends and taking care of loved ones. They forgotten that those remittances put together could do something, uh, you know, tangible for you back home. But again, this is life. Uh, we are not here for ourselves. We are also here for our brothers and sisters. Um, let's look out for ourselves. Let us be truthful to each other. And let us understand the purpose for which we are on this earth. Okay. I'm going to sign out. Uh, hopefully, I can come up with some... Uh, uh, exciting videos pretty much what i wanted to do is to interview african professionals living in the diaspora okay what they do um why they are here do they have any plans of moving back home you know but i'm yet to find out if i'm successful I'll put up such videos. I know it's going to be a little difficult because you're going to dive into people's personal space. Uh, you, you know, pretty much you're going to ask people about their personal life and not everybody wants to be on camera. So let us also note that. But hey, if you're living in the diaspora and you want us to have a conversation about your profession, you want to talk to people living in the diaspora about what you do, uh, be it a nurse, a doctor, an engineer, a teacher, you know, an advisor, a counselor, whatever profession you are in. Uh, hit me up, send me a message, and I'll put my email on the screen. Just send me an email and let's have a dialogue. Let's have a conversation. Um, it is adieu for now. I'll see you in my next video.